from MTN Sports. Welcome to Grizzly Insider, sponsored by Albertson Safeway. Hello everyone and welcome to this week's episode of the Grizzly Insider here on the Montana Television Network. Alongside the voice of the Grizz, Riley Corcoran, I'm Kyle Hansen. We're your hosts coming off of the Montana Grizzlies overtime loss to the Weber State Wildcats 55-48. to Boy, Riley, back-to-back -back weeks, these shoot shootouts, man, I mean, crazy how conference play is beginning. It really is, Kyle. I mean, this is already turning into an unprecedented season for a variety of reasons, some good, some bad, but just the style of game and just the wildness of the second halves and the lead changes in this one. I mean, six lead changes, five of them coming in the final 10 minutes of regulation and then, of course, in overtime. But uh, just the feel of this game and trying to find the identity of this team, obviously a gut-wrenching loss. You, mm -hmm. you lose the home winning streak of 15 in a row. That was something really special, right? It kind of coincided with the sellout streak of 14 consecutive sellouts as of Saturday. So all that being said, very disappointing. And obviously, anytime you lose at home and lose a conference game, it's a bit deflating. Some of your, your thoughts from, from what you saw on Saturday. It was wild because it felt very similar to Eastern Washington, right? Especially the final frames. You look at the fourth quarter into overtime, 49 points between the fourth quarter and overtime periods. Like you mentioned, lead change after lead change, shootout, because every time an offense took the field, you're like, they might just score in three plays, you know, or hit a home run ball, something like that. So very similar vibes. They felt a lot like the Idaho loss in 2022, the last time the Grizz lost at home, because a lot of confidence on the Weaver State sideline, a little bit quiet, the crowd kind of getting into it and getting taken out of it, which is a big factor. But when you look at kind of the, the dichotomy of this game, mm -hmm. right, you know, first half especially, obviously Weaver State jumps out quick, 28-10. Special teams touchdown, and then from there, Montana again chipping away and got back into it. Yeah, similarities in this regard, Kyle, I would say to Western Carolina in the fact where it was the opponent that threw mm -hmm. the first punch in that game. Grizzly defense did make adjustments, I think, in the third quarter, middle of the fourth quarter a little bit before Weber State got it going again. But focusing on the first half in general, I think that just the running game of Weber State, number one, of being consistent, but then the big passing plays. Again, yeah. six touchdowns for Richie Munoz, very impressive for a sophomore quarterback yeah. to come in and do that but not only that three of those six touchdowns were over 50 yards so it's the big plays unfortunately some missed tackles and it really just piled up maybe the biggest surprise of it all though special teams yeah. and the kick return touchdown that seemed to be a big deflator among all the big plays in that game that one really seemed to stand out above the rest your first half thoughts I agree yeah completely because yeah. when you get a special teams touchdown it just doesn't happen right especially against Bobby Houck's coached special teams so when you get a play like that that team takes kind of the momentum it reminds me of NAU last year with yeah. the block punt right so things like that can happen and kind of change what's going on but then you look at the offense for the Grizzlies again shootout and they are just kind of free flowing and even as the game became a shootout they were firing on all cylinders. They were, and that is the bright spot. And it's tough, you know, you, you look past and everyone wants to look at the final score, but the bright spot, clearly, again, that offense, Eli Gilman, another career game, not only in the rushing attack, but that 68-yard big-time touchdown that he had. Keelan White, so happy for him in game number 50 of his career to have career totals like he did come up in big-time moments. So, still bright spots in it, but when you look at all three phases, right, trying to put it together, and you got to give Weber credit to come in here and do that. A team that, that uh, they, they're this close, three points away from being 5-0 and against FCS competition. So you look at it from that lens, it goes to show you the margin for error is so slim right now. Absolutely. Big Sky Conference off to a wild start here in the 2024 fall football season. And we've got a great show coming your way to dissect this one. Bobby Hauk will join Riley here on the other side of the break. We'll also be joined later on by wide receiver Keelan White. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Grizzly Insider, sponsored by Albertson Safeway. And welcome back to the Grizz Insider. Montana, a tough one at home. 15-game home winning streak comes to a close at the hands of Weber State. An overtime loss. Coach Alk here to break it down with this coach. And we're going to dive into a little bit of everything because that game, again, had so many plays and moments and six lead changes. But uh, just your general thoughts. You've had some time to reflect on it and a lot of plays that could have went a different direction. But just tell us your thoughts on the loss, Coach. Yeah, sure. Uh, certainly, it was quite a game. You know, I was that was a, as wild and good a college football game to be a part of as I can imagine. Uh, so it, it was a great game. Um, I was really proud of our guys fighting their tail off because we got we got down and for our guys to continue to fight back and play so hard to get back in the game and then and then take the lead a couple of times and you know it's just a you know it's it's a, it's shameful and heartbreaking to give a field goal up on the last play of the game and then lose it in overtime. So. 
Uh, I feel bad for our guys, but they fought their tails off, and I was proud of them. Down 18 in the first half, and like you said, got the lead multiple times in the fourth quarter. Let's go to the first half first before we get to the comeback trail, and <coughs> just maybe some of the factors that, that led you having to climb out of a hole, at least in the first half, as both teams again were feeling each other out. Well, it's all it's all three phases. You got to convert. You got to match drives. Been victimized by the big play a little bit. Certainly, that happened a bunch yesterday. So we've come out of the gate pretty fast in a few games, and we've actually probably played better when we haven't at times. I don't know. We got to put it all together. That's probably the the main takeaway. And when you go into the halftime locker room, right, facing a deficit, and then you guys come out, it reminded me a ton of the Western Carolina game again, where <clears throat> the adjustments were made on the defensive side, and, and you held them in check as the offense got in their groove and continued to take the lead. So. So what were you most proud of? What, what was the, the highlights, or at least, that you would think in the second half as you got the lead back? Well, I think we, again, started making more plays when they're and, – and the key to the whole game is, is to make – when you're in position to make a play, you got to make it. And we'll do that. We've got guys that are willing, that are attentive to detail, and we'll get that short up. But we went out and we made plays on both sides of the ball coming out of the locker room in the kicking game and it was really going our direction. And then where it got away from us is we had we had taken the lead and then we'd give up a big play and have to come from behind again. It just we couldn't quite get up by two scores and it cost us at the end. Four of the touchdowns for Weber State were 50 yards or more in that game as coach was mentioning about the big plays. Obviously a strength continues to be your offense coach with Logan Fife at the helm with uh, another 300 yard passing game 30 completions, Keelan White a career game in the receiving area, and then Eli Gilman with four touchdowns. So what can you say about the offense that continues to, to at least be the strength, at least right now, for your team? Well, the running backs are running really hard. It's uh, They're doing a great job. Nick and Eli are getting most of those carries. They're doing a great job. The receivers are making plays on the ball. Quarterbacks have played well, and, and then, of course, it all uh, starts up front. The guys up front are playing, playing it really well. And on the other side, Coach, defensively, of course, under the microscope right now, and those big plays that you're talking about. But at the, the same time, just what's the message to those guys as you move forward? Because there's still plenty of season left in, and needing to get some of the things corrected to make sure that Grizz, of course, are on the right side of things. Yeah, simply when you're in position to make a yeah. play, make it. That's where we're at. We're there. We're where we need to be. We just got to make the play. When you talk about your team in general through six games, Games and not hitting the reset button in <coughs> any stretch. You look at the two losses, the field goal at the end of regulation in North Dakota, and then an overtime loss to Weber State at home. What's the message to your team just collectively that, that hey, there's still a lot of light at the end of that tunnel? Well, certainly. Um, you know, we've, we've got two losses, and all we needed is one more play in either game to win it. So um, we're right where we uh, need to be, not, not necessarily where we want to be. We'd like to have those two wins. But the other team's trying hard, too. Our guys are uh, are really working at it, and uh, you know we got a big week ahead of us. We do against Northern Arizona. One final question for you: Kyle's about to talk with Keelan White. Had a milestone game for him, not only from a production standpoint, but he played in yeah. his 50th game in a Grizzly uniform. A model of consistency came here in 2019. What's he meant to your team and the receiving core, Coach? Well, he's, Keelan's done a great job. He's honed his craft. He's become a really good technician. He's good with the ball in his hands. He catches it cleanly. He goes up in traffic and gets it. Hard to believe he's a senior, you know, after walking in here from Vancouver, Canada. You know, he's stayed healthy. He hurt his thumb. Put his hand down at Northern Colorado a couple of years ago. But other than that, he's stayed pretty healthy. And... Um, just made some big plays for the Grizz. Yes, he has a fantastic career. And Keelan White will talk with Kyle Hansen on the other side of the break. Welcome back to Grizzly Insider, sponsored by Albertson Safeway. Welcome back to the Grizzly Insider. We're very excited to be joined by senior wide receiver Keelan White. Keelan, thanks so much for being here. Obviously, tough game on Saturday, but a wild game at the same time, right? So, yeah. from the players' perspective, just you know, how do you guys kind of dissect that one and you know try to move on here as you still got a lot of football left to play? Yeah, it was a uh, it was a crazy game. Uh, props to Weber for playing hard all the way till the end, and you know, props to us too for playing hard all the way to the end. And you know, just one more, we need one more play. They made one more play. It just worked out the way it worked out. And that's obviously the story of your guys' season, right? Because there's been a couple of these games where you guys kind of maybe get punched early, fight your way back. I think specifically Western Carolina being down early yeah. in that one. Same thing with this one, right? They t jump out to that 28 10 lead, and you guys don't go away. So speak to, especially on the offensive side, you guys able to come back and, you know, never not quit in this one at all. I'm proud of our, us offensively as, like, you know, a big play happens and we don't flinch. We know what our game plan is, we know what we're capable of, and we just go 
out there and execute the play called and put drives together and I'm proud of our team because that's that's how we're trained we're trained mentally tough so we're trained not to not to flinch in the face of adversity and I think we do a good job of battling hard all the way to the end third quarter felt like you guys are really kind of grinding your way back into it right and then that fourth quarter hits <laughs> it is just punch for punch yeah. the whole way so from your perspective what was it like playing that fourth quarter and what was it like for you guys because again it was lead change after lead change mm -hmm. didn't matter what Weber State did you guys were still right there to answer back yeah um, uh, we, we knew it was going to be a fight we knew coming in that they were going to punch us in the mouth a couple times and we had to respond and we weren't afraid of what our response was going to be and it showed there in the fourth quarter just being able to respond and get in the end zone and yeah. In the fourth quarter especially, a lot of guys were starting to stand out, but you specifically were really starting to kind of help that offense go, getting open, making big catches. So for you, what were you seeing in the fourth quarter? How were you able to have such a big game, career high for you, 11 catches, 163 yards at the end of the day? We're expecting a lot of man. You know, as receivers, we got to win in man coverage, and I think we did a good job of that. I did a good job of that. Being able to make, make the play when the ball comes your way is just taking advantage of your opportunities. So yeah. You were the leading receiver for the Grizzlies a year ago. The last two games, you've kind of been on a tear right now. To start Big Sky Conference play. Anything changed for you the last couple of games? Feel like you're getting to a rhythm? What's what's working for you these last couple of games? Um, you know, just for me, just I think it's just being consistent what my assignment is and executing the play. And you know, we have so many weapons on our offense. It's kind of like any given week, there's potential for one of us to pop off. Like you saw Junior last week, and there's a lot of weapons in our offense, and there's big play capabilities there. So yeah, absolutely. Four and two for you guys on the season right now. One and one in Big Sky Conference play. Your assessment halfway through the year. Just what's how would you say that you know the team's looking right now? And Obviously, six games left in the regular season. Still plenty to be sorted out here the rest of the way. Yeah, we're, we're looking good. We, Our guys, we work hard every day to go out and win each week. And sometimes it doesn't go your way. But just like last year after that loss, we kind of took a look in the mirror, decided who we wanted to be, and go out and just keep winning every week. And that's what we got to do. we just got to go keep winning every week. Right now, you guys have the number one offense in the Big Sky Conference. What's it like being a part of that, right? You know, working with Logan 5, Katie Lee, Ayat, a couple weeks prior to that. What's it been like working with them? And what's it been like being a part of this, such a high-powered unit that's just just putting up numbers and points week after week. Yeah, it's uh, it's been really fun actually. Just uh, you know, every week, like every Monday, when we get like our install plays for the week, like it's fun knowing that like we have so many things that we can do because we have so many good players. Logan's playing is playing really well. Kia Lee is a baller. You know, like we have receivers, running backs. Like we have a lot of opportunities to to do that and make those plays. So. Yeah, it's, it's super fun. One final question for you, and we got to talk about this right here. One of the more unique merch items I think <laughs> I've seen a player do. So you see a lot of guys will do, you know, jerseys or things like that, but you, a coloring book. Yeah. How about this? Go ahead and show people what this coloring book looks like. And the theme behind it, the Canadian Spiders, folks have seen your celebrations. That's kind of the <laughs> mantra you've uh, embraced. Yeah, so uh, uh, during the off season, I was just kind of thinking of, here's, here's a coloring book, by the way. But uh, I was just kind of thinking of, um, stuff to do in ways to get myself out there and get my merch out there and everyone does like t-shirts and stuff like that like you said but I do the summer camps every summer with the, the little kids camps and I saw the, the impact I had on them and I kind of wanted to give something for them and just something cool and fun and unique that was able to like kind of pop like stick out so yeah and it sticks out for sure yeah. the kids love it it's yeah. doing very well I love to see one of the more unique things for sure so Thank thanks you. for bringing that Keelan thanks for yeah. being here and good luck the rest of the way Thank you. And on the other side of the break Riley and I will break down Montana's upcoming game against Northern Arizona here on the Grizzly Insider welcome back to Grizzly Insider sponsored by Albertson Safeway and welcome back to the Grizz Insider. As Kyle, we put a bow on this week, and particularly the run for Montana here. The first six games of the regular season, we have now hit the halfway point. And we know it's been a bit of a bizarre season, but you've got the numbers to back that up. Right, so you look at the last two games, right? Eastern Washington, Weber State, 104 points allowed. From what I could see in the archive book, kind of looking back, it's the first time since 1968 the Montana Grizzlies have allowed over 100 points in back-to-back -back games, but that stretch, it was 106 points they allowed going against Utah State and Idaho back in 1968. But you look at some of these other numbers too. So if you include Western Carolina, 139 points they've allowed in those three games. Last year, total 159 points regular season 11 games last year for the Grizzlies 116 just in big sky play so that gives you a little context of what the defense is doing plus some kind of nitty-gritty stats you see kind of what's what's going wrong there and really third down defense is something we've talked about a lot on the show and really on our broadcast but the Grizz collectively the, the previous three years number one in the country in third down defense the last three games they're allowing about a 50 percent conversion rate so needless to say the defense will have to pick it up a little bit the offense has been 
historic in its yeah. own right on the other side of things. We flip the page. We get ready for homecoming week. Grizz welcome in Northern Arizona. Revenge will be the word of the week. We talk to Coach Houck about the Lumberjacks. They do. NAU's got a, got a good football team. We've been looking forward to this game uh, since they got us a year ago. And, uh, you know, we love homecoming. It, it's great. It's a chance to see all the old uh, friends and family get back for this one. And uh, our team will be looking forward to the game on Saturday. Well, Kyle, the storyline for this week probably is a little different with the Grizz coming off a loss because really revenge was going to be the, the number one word when talking about the, the Lumberjacks. But this is a different Northern Arizona team led by a new head coach. Yeah, Brian Wright, first year head coach at Northern Arizona yeah. taking over for Chris Ball. Three and three so far this year, right? And you look at their games, it's kind of an interesting schedule. They're one of these teams that plays the FBS school, yeah. plays the non-FCS school, things like that. But three and three, but those three losses, you look at it, it's Idaho, Incarnate Word, and Arizona, who they played really close with. Mm -hmm. And so this NAU team's trademark is defense. One of the best defenses in the Big Sky Conference, number one in pass defense and pass efficiency. Top three in interceptions. Defensive back Alex McLaughlin kind of makes the ship run out, and fans will remember him last year because he had an interception against the Grizzlies as a freshman. So he's been good kind of right out of the gates, and so it's it's going to be strength versus strength, right? Montana's offense, NAU's defense, who go, does better? And then when you look at NAU's offense versus Grizz defense, who steps up a little bit? I think that's the case there. Uh, it'll be fascinating to watch both sides of the ball. NAU, their quarterback situation against the Grizzly defense that needs to improve. And as you mentioned, matchup of the game, can that Grizz offense keep it rolling? Last four games, the Grizz have averaged over 50 points per contest as well as over 600 yards per game. We'll see if Brent Pease and his crew can keep that up. Kyle, we finally have a good enough sample size in the Big Sky mm -hmm. Conference to take a peek at the standings and to see where everyone's at through two games. The early contenders, obviously uh, the Cats undefeated, Weber yeah. State undefeated, UC Davis, but there's some big time matchups this week and both of them just happen to be in the Treasure State. No kidding, how about that? So huge game, obviously over in Bozeman. You look at Idaho, but, uh, Montana State. This is a game a lot of people circled, you can see, yeah. because Montana State has been cruising along, but they haven't really played like the top tier competition yet. And then you look at Idaho, had the stumble last week against Davis and have to kind of grind out a win over Northern Arizona. Arizona. So they're dealing with some injuries, obviously, at the quarterback position. So that'll be a big one. And then this NAU Grizz game, I think, is a big game right now. Because, like you mentioned, the Grizz are going to want to get the get back game. But this is a good Northern Arizona team, middle of the pack on offense when you look at their stats. But, man, this team, and going to be a lot of juice from them, too, wanting to make a statement, see a Grizz team that's a little wounded, and seeing they played against Idaho, you never know. Desperation will be the word of the week. Both of these teams coming off losses can't afford to drop another Big Sky Conference game. Should be another great weekend in Missoula for home homecoming weekend and we'll wrap up the show on the other side of the break. There's more coverage of the Grizzlies online anytime at montanasports.com. Welcome back to Grizzly Insider sponsored by Albertson Safeway. Well, as we wrap things up here on the Grizzly Insider, very fun event this last Friday over at the Adams Center, of course, emceed by Riley and done a great job by the UM Athletic Department. It was the Grizzly Sports Hall of Fame banquet as they brought in four new inductees and a lifetime honors winner. And it's it's one of my favorite events to go attend and watch and cover. And Riley, for you, I imagine it's very special it, as well. It's very gratifying, right? For someone that gets into this business and you're, you're right there with me with the stories and just the history of it, the Hall of Fame event really ties it all together. Yeah. And to see these Grizzly greats come back and have yet another moment in the spotlight, whether it's a Scott Guernsey and it's 30 years later, or whether it's Colt Anderson. He's still in the spotlight every day with being the special teams coordinator for the Titans, but to see him come back to Montana and what that means to him, all of that stuff's fantastic. First time in over 20 years that three football players were represented. All of them in different eras, which I thought was really unique. And then Kelly Pilcher Beatty, the Lady Grizz representative, fourth straight year for the Lady Grizz being honored, ninth overall. But that football class, they all, were, they all had some fun up there, right? Colt Anderson from, from the late 2000s era. Dylan McFarlane, one of the absolute greatest offensive linemen to ever do it, a national champion in his own right. And I'll admit, in that 2001 national championship run, some may tend to forget all five of those offensive linemen from the state of Montana. A lot of sense of pride there. And then Scott Guernsey, 30 years later, I mean, everyone knows Guerns for that personality and, and his time on the Grizzly Radio Network, but he's one of the top wide receivers all time at Montana, and he started that run with Dave Dickinson. So, absolutely a fun event. And Kyle, as we have grown to love Grizzly football weekends. 
every weekend seems to have something attached to it. This weekend, not only is it homecoming, a loaded schedule. It's going to be awesome. Everybody's home this week. So really loaded schedule here. You have volleyball and soccer both home yeah. for a couple uh, double headers against Idaho and Eastern Washington. And then, of course, the Grizz football game against Northern Arizona on Saturday, plus a pep rally on Friday. So it's going to be a busy week. Very exciting week for the community of Missoula. It's going to be a great week just for athletics in general. It should be fun, Kyle. And even easier to turn the page after a tough defeat when you have all those fun events coming up. 100%. Well, the kickoff for Montana and Northern Arizona, 2 p.m. this Saturday. You can listen to Riley on the call or catch it on the Montana Television Network. Thanks so much for joining us here on the Grizzly Insider, and have a great weekend.